transforming X Transbots trailer into robot mode is actually pretty easy if you happen to be a genius. Here I'm going to show you how to go from trailer to robot bypassing the base mode because from what I understand nobody really cares about it. There is a tiny little hole here that you can use to open up the rear of the trailer and then pop these out disconnect these back sections yeah don't even bother trying to keep these things out they just keep falling apart every time you move the trailer a tiny bit you can see here that my head plate has already come detached from here well that's because I didn't manage to get them connected on both sides anyway if somebody figures out how to do that please let me know take your crowbar and pop open these two panels here. If you jiggle this, these hooks will come up so it's easier to disconnect those and lift them up. Pull these side panels down, disconnect that, lift it up, no. yeah. disconnect these panels here and open these up to about 45 degrees it will snap into place and that's not really the appropriate word um, when you have it at about 45 degrees you'll find that this will close fairly easily not all the way because then it's binding on there but you can get it out the way good enough for now now when you lift the trailer up in the middle it comes apart here so you can open it up enough that you've got clearance for this yellow piece to come out from under the missile pods and this red piece also needs to come out from under the missile pods. Now flip up this red part here. You want to flip out this panel here. And if you get it in just the right position, you don't need to force it and bend it. You just have to sort of rotate it like this until you find the sweet spot. Now to, the red part is trapped underneath this black piece. All we need to do is rotate the shoulder joint like that and it's clear. And then we can fold out there, fold out that panel to fill up a gap there. Just gonna tuck this out of the way. Uh, like that. Flip up this grey panel, swing this dark grey piece round and insert it so that it plugs into that gap. Double hinge that. Uh, there's this tiny little piece here. Fold that out of the way. Fold this panel up. Rotate it all the way round. And then double hinge it over and we want to put that tab into that hole. Yeah, and just tuck that out of the way like so. Take this grey section and pull it out. There's an extending slider just here. On the yellow side, we've got to be careful of this horn here. There's not much clearance, but we can prevent mangling of the tip and the tip is super sharp I've got a little owie there from the other day that's healing up nicely now after a trip to A&E and five stitches we've got to get the yellow part out from underneath the black part again do that by turning the shoulder joint just one click that way and then If you lift up the shoulder joint there you'll have enough clearance to get his horn out and then you want to use these two joints here these are stiff joints and the plastic is a little bit on the flexible side so uh, we also want the head we want these joints to be extended like this so that we can keep the head out the way later and keep it clear and then if it hasn't already moved out, pull this joint out on the slider this way. 
extend this yellow piece, get the hand out of the way, fold this panel down. Bring this gray panel around here, rotate it, fold this inside, double hinge this back here, double hinge this over here, and this tab goes in this hole. I've actually done this side better than the other side. And these, the bicep swivel is on a diagonal slider. Disconnect this ramp from this chest panel. It pegs in really securely this way around, so you might need to disconnect it like that. And then double hinge and swivel. Unfortunately, I can't find a way of pegging this securely. It Oh, okay. Two tabs here need to be prized up. In case you can't see, there are two lumps here. The tabs are just between those two things. Fold them all the way into that hole. When mine arrived, these panels were not folded out. So you might not have to do this step, but fold them in and flatten that. Bring the wheels down and then slide them on this bar here. And you need to keep this panel folded as far that way as you can, about 45 degrees. And then we've got to fold this panel here. I'm going to push from the other side. There's a clearance issue on this, on this hinge here. So as far as I can tell, you need to do a little bit of a, a bend there. So again, this panel folds 45 degrees. That gives us the clearance to push that out. And then if you get this, this panel here is on a double hinge swivel. This corner up here tends to get in the way a bit more. So if you can just tilt it that way, this part here puts up a little bit less resistance. Fold that in. Now fold this panel back in. Can get a little bit sticky there. When it meets this hinge arm here, you'll need to use the the pivot in the middle of the two hinges to get it round there. But you don't need to bend anything, you just need to get things at the right angle. And then fold up these, slide them back in, doesn't matter whether you slide and then flip, but just tuck them back like that. Now what we need to do is bring the wheels through this gap here where we folded those panels up. As far as I can tell, there's a bit of a clearance issue here. If there's a better way of doing it, then perhaps somebody smarter than me will let me know. Uh, swing that out the way and pop the head up there. There are one, two, three joints here, so you can use those to find a position that will stay out of the way the best. You need to have these panels here angled this way about 45 degrees, otherwise you won't have clearance here. So then we should just be able to tilt this through on, surprise, surprise, a double hinge. There's that clearance issue there. And then we can bring it through, bring it all the way back. We've got a, a piece here for the registration plate. That's got to go behind this. much easier when you're not trying to keep your hands out of the way for a camera. This panel comes down. There's a, a little corner here that you've got to... Okay, well, 
when it's brand new, you might find that it needs a bit of force to get it get it over those corners. I seem to have worn them down now. And what we've got to do is we've got two rectangular pegs here and a hook and two round pegs. Round pegs go in there, hook goes there, rectangular pegs go there. And what you've got to do, if you can get the rectangular pegs just on the edge of the hole and then line up these side panels as best you can and then connect it like that. It seems to have got easier with repeated use. Now we're going to peg the top of the torso together. We're going to have to undo it later to put Motormaster in later. I'm not going to put Motormaster in now because I don't want all that extra mass to deal with. Connect this plate under these two hooks here. Let's bring this out the way. This rotates and then we can swing this around here. Got to get the head out the way. In order to get the head out the way enough, I need to rotate that shoulder joint. There we go, now the head is out of the way. Swing this around like this and there's a pin joint here so we can drop that out of the way. You've got to get the this, the end of the head plate hinge, make sure that goes over there, over the black part. but under this raised section here. And then there's a tab here that sits in there. It's not very secure, so don't trust it yet. What we need is get this out of the way so that we can fold this up here. That tab goes in there. There's a peg in here which is like a little key. You need to have that. If you have it so that these two little nobbles on the side of this are pointing straight up, then that should fit into this keyhole here at the same time as closing this panel. Now, rotate this until this piece meets this little stopper here, and now this side is locked in secure. This panel here needs to be rotated 180 degrees. You need to get the double hinge at about 45 degrees from this so that you can rotate it without getting in the way of this tab here. Then, there's another key-like peg here which goes into this oval hole. And the way to do that, don't just close this when it's perpendicular and ram it in. You'll break the peg eventually. What you need to do is rotate it just a little bit that way. And then it goes in quite well. Then straighten it up. Flip this around. No, leave it there and close it so that it's black there. Let's bring this round. If there's... If you meet resistance in this double hinge, then you've got to pull it around like this instead of just forcing it around there. And now we can close this panel. You can see it meets that one nicely. There. And then this comes around and locks in place there. on the other side. Bring this up and flip it down on this pin joint here. This grey peg, you can see it's got a narrower end, that needs to go on the other end of this. So bring this into position and then slide that in, tab that there. Now before you do anything else, hold that in place, swing the head plate down and back and tab it in at the front here and that will give you a little bit more stability. It sits in this 
little corner there. This tab goes into there. You want this central hinge at about 45 degrees to either of these two panels. So we can rotate it and then flip it round to this side here. There's a little, one of those keys here that you need to bring up. Make sure that these two pieces are completely horizontal and then this key can slot into this keyhole. Once that's in, rotate this piece anti-clockwise. You need to get that tab out of the way. Rotate that anti-clockwise and that locks it in place. There's a key, tape, key peg here that goes into this oval hole. So fold this panel in, give it a little bit of a rotation in that direction and then it will go in quite easily and then you can put it vertical. Rotate this panel and then when you bring this piece around on that double hinge we can close that and it fits nicely in there. Close this tab and that's locked in. On this grey section we've got a little bar here with two screws. You want to, you're going to dig something in there to slide. I'm also going to put a couple of fingers under his head plate to support it because at the same time as sliding this end we need to slide this end. There's a little rectangular peg there. So if we slide these two across and then once it's reached the far side keep pushing on this tab here and that will bring this panel to the front. It might not bring it quite far enough. You might need a little bit of help. And then there's a tiny tab there that sits just behind this and this and then slide it down on this slider here, lock it in place with that tab there. I can't get this tab to go in any further than that. I'm sure it's supposed to go all the way up, but I'm not going to force it. So I'm going to support his body weight by putting a couple of fingers underneath there and then I'm sliding these two pieces across there and then push further on this to open out this panel, tuck tuck that little tiny black tab behind the grey part as you push down there and bring up that tab to hold it in place and let's bring his head around and get his arms out of the way as far as possible. We need to open up this section here. These three tabs are hooks and they're all fastening in opposite directions but if you open the two panels up together there shouldn't be an issue. What you can do is slide your longest finger right into the middle so that you can apply pressure somewhere near the middle. At the same time you can pull up on this rectangular piece which is going to go this way. So pushing up in the middle and it opens up easily. Flip him onto his back, swing these panels with the four long slots in we need to rotate these, rotate them up 90 degrees and then disconnect this faux wheel from this peg here and the same on the other side. The instructions say to have this panel closed but that makes it really awkward. So we just pop that up there on this double hinge and now we can finish rotating these pieces so that the flat side is facing downwards. There's a tab here and here. Then we can open that out to the side. Actually, that doesn't matter. Now there's a tab in there on both sides. So prise that out. And we bring these around here. Swivel the trailer hitch on this pin joint and then bring the whole thing round to the back. We need to rotate at the waist swivel. I don't think that these two connections here will survive the amount of torque on this. So I recommend you put your thumb against the hinge and then 
push with your fingers. My right hand is just supporting the weight of the torso. The left hand is doing all of the work. And now once you're here, you can rotate this back up on that, back down on this pin hinge, and then you can tuck that out of the way like that. Lay him down. Separate the two feet. And then using the ankle joints, we need to get this peg out this way and this is underneath this. So we can do that with the two joints there and then fold that all the way up, bring this out to the side. So on the other side, pushing, tilting the foot that way slightly. Enables us to clear this part here and then swing that up. Disconnect the tabs here, shouldn't be difficult. Swing these pieces to here, flip these down. Now let's get the rear hip skirts all the way up and out, and the front hip skirts, and the side of the front hip skirts. There's a there's a spiky corner sticking out of the side hip skirt, so we can use that to start pushing this out. And then you can get that all the way out of the way. Flip these panels up. Don't forget these tiny little pieces here. Fold these out. Fold those pieces into place, and then we've got one side of the thigh. Swivel round the joint in the middle of the thigh, like this. Bring this grey part over here, and then rotate it anti-clockwise on this joint here, so that all of the purple stuff is facing the back. Then we can swing this down and peg that into place on his thigh. Spread that to give us space. Bring this up in the middle of the thigh, fold this plate down, snap that into place, and rotate this grey part clockwise on the other side. Flip these panels up to fill up the front of the thighs. lock everything in place. We need to double hinge this over, fold this all the way over and then double hinge and pivot, double hinge and pivot. We want to have this panel here underneath, there's a, a curved bit sticking out there, let's put that under this panel and then fold this as far as it will go, fold this up to 90 degrees. This is just gonna hang out in the hole in the back, but this is going to tuck underneath this rectangular piece here. So we need to fold this up on the double hinge and give it a wiggle like that. See that's sitting there. And then this tab goes into this slot here. If, it's, if you're having trouble with it going in, that's because you haven't adjusted these double hinges correctly. You need this side panel to be as far forwards as possible. So if his leg is coming undone when you're trying to pose him, this is probably the reason why. So we just squash that down. See, that is not gonna come out without some actual effort. The same can be said for this side here. There. And then lock that in place. Once that's flat, you can fold this all the way in. That sits there. And now we can rotate the foot into position. You'll find that the foot doesn't rotate when the leg is open. Sometimes there's a, there's a clearance issue here with this tab, which is probably how I broke it off on this side. So what you want to do really is rotate this up like this and then see I'm rotating the two panels in the opposite direction and then I can 
hinge swivel and it goes that way. Turn that all the way around, double hinge and swivel, fold that, fold that. We don't have to do anything about this, there's nothing to fold over this. All we need to do now is bring this up, make sure this side panel is as far that way as possible so that that locks in and that's secure and the same on this side. Just manipulating those double hinges to get that in the right place. Bring the foot around. So now bring these pieces here. This black piece you need to have it sticking out at right angles. If you have it further then you're not going to be able to split the feet apart because it will get in the way here. That's something that catches me out quite frequently. To get the best leverage on it you want to put your fingers into this hole on the back of his fit foot because that's central and then also link your fingers into this groove along this the center of his foot and then just slowly pull it with all of your might maybe tweak a few bits along the way this is really stiff there we go now we can pull out the middle sections double hinge them out Again, make sure you've got this piece, this black piece at 90 degrees. Flip outside panels. Fold these in. The hip section we're on the home stretch now double hinge this plate down we're going to lock these two bars into place on here and then simply tuck that inside low down that will sit underneath motormaster behind motormaster's legs now what we've got, I'm just going to bring this out of the way so you can see, we've got a ratchet here, but this is locked by this bar here. What you need to do is push this bar, although it's possible that what you're supposed to do is pivot this side panel on this joint here and push it in like that, and that enables you to bend it upwards like this, but yeah, there we go, okay. Now, this plate here, we need to double hinge that forwards, swing it round three quarters of a turn on this joint here, and then double hinge it inside. Same thing on this side. Double hinge forwards, swing it round three quarters of a turn on that joint there, double hinge it down and in. And then these four, these four teeth here go into these four holes. If you just let the weight take the tabs into the holes, it will hold well enough, but it will come apart when you lift it up. But that's okay, we'll make that better later on. Bring the arms down to shift the center of mass further down. Now we come to combining it. I recommend starting at the bottom to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. I also recommend starting with breakdown because it's easiest because his holes are round, whereas Wild Riders, they're kind of triangular. So what we want to do is connect these four tabs to his wheels. So I recommend you really just find whatever hole 
is nearest to the peg because it being round you can adjust it later so you're just going for whatever hole is near because any holes a goal in it lads am I right I'm not pegging them in fully at this point I'm just getting just the tip in on these two rear wheels and then I'm pulling it I'm pulling the car this way so that the recess on the inside of these faux wheels sits in the wheel arch and then when I'm satisfied it's in the right place I can squeeze it in and then I can do the same with these ones Same thing with Wild Rider, except it's harder because they are tri uh, triangular hinges with a curved outer edge. So once you've you've got to find, you've got to line the hole up exactly. The only thing I do recommend is that you split the back half as if you're starting the transformation, so you've got a little bit more wiggle. Fitting drag strip is reasonably easy. Oh look, I've forgotten that panel there. Bend the elbow on this lower hinge. You only want to go about that far because any further than that and there'll be a clearance issue here. Bring this grey piece all the way up and then you can slot these two holes into these two tabs. And then lock him in place with that. For the upper section, his waist peg goes into a hole here and these two grey pieces need to go into these two holes here and there's a hook here that's going to hook on the outside of this yellow bar here, pointing to a yellow bit on a yellow item, not very helpful. So lock, put that in the bottom and then pinch and slot them over those shoulders. If you've got this locked in properly, then the engine block can only go that far. The alternative, as far as I can tell, is to lay it down against the arm there, which looks okay, depending on how you're posing him. Make sure that this arm, you get that folded in. Make sure that the lower half is pressed together firmly because this relies on two little hooks here they won't be able to hook on securely enough if you've got any separation in the legs the exhaust parts go into two little recesses here lock it in place it's a little bit wobbly until you get this locked in the waist peg goes into this hole here and there's a grey part here that's going to hook over the white part there. This is supposed to be spring loaded but as you can see the spring doesn't actually work on this. I don't know how widespread this issue is. Peg that in there and close that and then what what you need what I need to do is push that into place there and then do that. It will come loose if you jiggle it but it's still actually quite secure. I haven't found that this disconnects when I'm posing him. Motormaster's fairly simple to sort out. The first thing you do is disconnect these pieces here with a, a twist like that and then fold the black part inside the fuel tanks. Disconnect these. In case you're wondering how this comes out so easily on mine, I trimmed these tabs down so that they're tiny stumps, it's enough to hold it in place. Flip both of those out, fold them at the ab crunch, flip these around and tuck them over the wheels. Close the ab crunch, then bring up the hip skirts and don't put pressure on the hip skirts themselves, you're going to stress those hinges. What you want to do is put pressure onto the hinges underneath and push so that it opens up on a hinge at the back there. And then he simply folds in half, put these hip skirts back down. Make sure that the wheels are 
fully spread and pointing straight forwards. I've taken these pieces off just so that there's less chance of something getting in the way of what I'm trying to show you. You can fold these pieces up, disconnect the side of the waist. I'm just going to move those out of the way just to stop these bits mashing on something. Good. I'm going to bring the arm forward and then flip it around to the back. Unlock the key by rotating it clockwise. We have to start with the left side first, you'll see why in a moment. Then we can disconnect the left side and that will disconnect the head hinge from here that's why we started with the left side then on the right side <coughs> unlock this key separate the head plate from the torso just slide that forwards now we can open up the right side as well we need to bring out this panel here, but first we've got to bring out the wheels and slide those down. I mean, fake wheels. These fake wheels need to be slid down to the bottom of this bar as well. Make sure the trailer hitch is folded all the way in. There are recesses up here for the front wheels. Top of the cab where the horns are will sit on top of these little bits here. So that just slots in like this. We've got to hold them in place at this point but we close the right panel. Make sure that you get this hinge in the right place. It's got to go over the side panel and behind the front panel now motor master is held in place by one hinge but it's enough for now we can close this tab here and then lock this key this black piece here needs to go back onto this peg here as we bring in the right at the top peg that in and then Fold the head plate down into place, lock it there, that gives us a bit more stability. Now we can make sure this tab is in place, lock this key anti-clockwise. We need to reconnect the four tabs. On either side, if you just let the weight push these tabs in it won't be very secure and it will come undone quite easily when you're manipulating it but what you can try and do is put your fingers inside and push down on the projections above the tabs here as you push up on this piece here now you can see it's actually a strong enough connection for me to lift up bring these panels back down here, like so, flip this panel out from underneath and then what we've got is two rectangular tabs that go into these rectangular holes and you can't actually see what you're doing but what you want is for this line here to be lined up with the top of this hinge there. And I thought this video would be shorter than the one showing how to get it into trailer mode. It's been really hard work doing these videos so I really hope you guys appreciated this. Please leave me some appreciation in the comments. For the front wheels and bollocks. Now we take motor mask off for his front wheels. We're just going to 